Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. You all know the number one calculation that I'm always preaching to you, right? Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit. And I also preach that when you're doing your pricing, you need to make sure that you're making sure that the price that you select is able to cover your costs, your expenses, and the profit that you desire. And that's all very true because at the end of the day, you cannot get away from the formula. When you take a dollar in, you're going to have to pay your costs. You're going to have to pay your expenses. And if there's money left over, that's going to be your profit. But here's where I see some folks taking it a little too far. And what ends up happening is they end up losing a lot of their business. Now, I'm expecting you to lose some of your business when you raise your prices, because if somebody's only using you for your cheap prices, they're going to disappear because they're going to go find somebody else that is willing to pay that price. But hopefully what's going to end up happening is your existing customers who love you for what it is that you do and what you accomplish are going to be willing to pay the higher price. Now, I'm not telling you to double your prices. That's not what I'm saying. But in most cases, when you go up 5, 10, 20 bucks, most people aren't going to leave if they feel that value is there. So if all of a sudden you're losing everybody, and I mean everybody, or at least a large chunk, not just onesie twosies, not just 20, 30%, but more than that, more than half of your clients are disappearing. I want you to take a pause and I want you to step back for a second because what may have happened is you overshot. You may have gone up too far too fast. And typically where I see this is usually in one of two areas. One, when I talk about the fact that you need to cover your costs your expenses, and your profit. Sometimes we want to make a lot of profit. So the number we key in for profit is much higher than probably what it should be. Let me give you an example. Let's just say that your costs run you about $50. And when you look at your expenses and you run the numbers, you're like, oh, my expenses are running 30%. I want to charge $100. So that means I got to put in $30 for my expenses and my profit's going to be $20. That's all true. The math works out and your new price could be $100. But here's where the challenge comes in. If you're going from $60 to $100, that might end up being a, a huge jump for some people to swallow. I want to make sure I really get this across to people. Yes, you need to cover your profits that you want. So if all of a sudden you say, hey, I'm, I'm only making $10 on this, I want to make $30 on it, that might be too big of a jump. I don't know without looking at your individual situation, but I want you to be cautious that you don't overprice yourself trying to get this huge profit. But there's a second part in that calculation that I see all of the time from people, and that has to do with operational expenses. One, you have to be realistic about the operational expenses you have today, but I want to make sure that you're not pricing to cover your crazy expenses. If you're running a lean mean machine, then yes, they need to be able to cover that lean mean machine. But if you're fat and happy inside of your operational costs, let's just say that every month your operational costs are running about $2,000. But if you really get in there and you get lean and mean, it's probably going to be closer to $1,500. I want you to make sure that your pricing doesn't shoot for the 2000 because that's not going to give you any incentive to get that operational costs under control. I see a lot of people that are trying to force the bad operational expenses into that pricing, thinking that's going to cover the mistakes that they're making operationally. Remember, profit is coming from a couple of different things. One, you've got to hold on to as much money as you can. Now, some people tend to raise their prices to cover their mistakes or to cover the fact that their operational costs are out of control. Honestly, the first thing that you need to do is you need to go through and make sure that your operational costs are lean and mean. Just because your operational costs are running you 30%, what would that number look like if you had cleaned it up? Like you had gone in there and you had made sure that you weren't overspending, that you were getting your waste down, that you weren't burning up tons of money in areas that you shouldn't be doing. Should your operational costs be 25%? That's one of the things that you need to look at. Also, when you make more sales, that percentage becomes less. So for example, if your operational costs come to $2,000 and you notice that when you do your sales that that percentage comes out to 30%, what you have to keep in mind is when you do more sales, not all of your operational expenses go up. Some will go up because they're based on sales, but a lot of your operational costs are going to remain the same. For example, your insurance doesn't change. Uh, sometimes your marketing doesn't change. It depends if you're getting new sales from a new op marketing program any rents that you pay, things like that. There's a bunch that don't change. You have to ask yourself that if you do more sales, is the $2,000 going to remain $2,000 or is it going to go to $2,500, for example? So you might double your sales, but your operational costs only go up 
a fraction of that, 25%. So while the sales go up 100%, the operational costs only go up 25%, which means that your percentage no longer will be 30%. More than likely, what's going to happen is your operational percentage is going to come down when you start to do more sales. So instead of 30%, it might be 27%, 25%. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers out here on a podcast, which is audio only, and I'm going to end up doing a video on this as well at some point on the YouTube channel. But for now, it's really important that you keep in mind that if you've overshot your pricing, like you've raised your pricing and you've lost a lot of people, I want you to step back because either A, you're having a failure where it comes to explaining the value of what it is that you're doing, which is very common. We, When we raise our prices, we feel uncomfortable with it. And because we're uncomfortable with it, we tend to struggle with how do we convey the value people get from that price. So that might be one reason. The second reason might be is that you've overshot what percentage you're trying to get out of the profit, that you're trying to get too much profit too soon. Uh, in which case you probably took your prices to a crazy amount instead of gradually going up with it. Uh, So it could be your profit that you've added into it. The third thing is exactly what we were just talking about when it comes to your operational expenses, that you have high operational expenses and you're expecting your pricing to cover your poor operational control. And you're much better off putting in an operational number that is more in line with what it should be and then working on the backside knowing that your profit will go up the minute you get those operational expenses in line. Uh, So I just wanted to touch a little bit on this whole thing about, you know, Tammy, I've raised my prices and now I've lost people. Now there's sometimes that's okay. Like I said, and I've explained this in some of the videos that I have on the channel is that sometimes you're going to lose 10%, 20%, maybe even 30% of your customers, but you're going to end up making more money. And then especially once you replace those people, you're going to make even more money. That's normal. Normal. But if you find that your whole business has dried up, you may have overshot the mark. And like I said, when you've overshot the mark, it's usually for a couple of reasons. Just like we just talked about, you you raise that price too quickly, too fast. You have way too much in there for your operational expenses and you need to get those operational expenses down or B, you're trying for too much profit out the get go. Uh, so I, I just want to make sure that when you do change your prices, pay attention to what's causing it because I want you to make the, the right tweaks and say, okay, well, maybe I overshot it. Maybe I need to pull that back a little bit. Maybe I need to do it more slowly. Maybe I need to go in and look at my operational. And by the way, your cost of goods, sometimes what you've been paying isn't what you're paying today, or maybe you can purchase it for cheaper from somewhere else. Always make sure that you're looking at your costs and your expenses and how you can reduce those because then you don't have to have such high pricing in some places. So I I know it sometimes seems like I'm saying both things. I want you to raise your prices because I do want you to have good pricing, but I don't want you to have unrealistic pricing either. I don't want you to price yourself out of the market. For example, if all of your competition is at $50 and all of a sudden your numbers are telling you you need to be at $100, it's not that I want you to back at the 50, but maybe 100 is way too far because you can't be so far ahead of your competition from the get-go without building that brand trust and loyalty where people know out in the community what they get by using you. You know, once you've built that brand loyalty and people know in the community that now they're way more expensive, but oh my gosh, let me tell you what you get. You know, that's different. But if you're just trying to pull away from the pack, just make sure that maybe instead of $50, yours is $70, $75. Don't go super crazy. Make sure you're always working on that back end side, how to reduce your costs and your expenses. So this way you can find the right sweet spot for that pricing. And then as you continue to grow that brand recognition and what you're doing, then you can continue to, to pull that separation between you and your competition even more so because you've built that reputation out there. So I just wanted to touch on this a little bit because like I said, I've been uh, having some conversations lately with some people and I just want to make sure that that we know that, you know, pricing is is not an exact science. It's not a plug in the numbers and get the price. Sometimes you have to tweak it based off of a lot of different factors. It could be competition. It could be the, the cost that it associated with doing it. Sometimes you're going to price something really low profit because you want to sell the accessories that go along with it. And that's where you make all your money. Uh, There's so many different things that we could talk about as far as pricing. But my main goal when I talk about this sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit, that's the reality of what happens to the money. How much you make is going to be based off of how well you control those costs and those expenses. And if that item is meant to make a lot of profit or is it a loss leader where it's bringing in people 
And the goal is to sell them all the other stuff, which is where the money's made. So just keep in mind that it's not an exact science. You need to tweak and change all the time. You need to make sure that you're not overshooting. You need to make sure that you've got the right realistic numbers in. And eventually you're going to come up with some pricing that really works really good. Uh, But I just wanted to kind of cover that today. And hopefully that makes sense for the people that's meant to hear it. And I will talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.